world The weather outside is not that cold And if you take my hand, I'll walk with you to Georgia Hello and welcome to Country with Celine. I'm your host, Celine Chamarki, and on today's show, we are going to be chatting with Tiana Woods. She was nominated the CMAO's Female Country Artist of the Year for six years in a row, okay? That's huge. Tiana, how are you doing today? I'm great, Celine. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Oh, anytime, anytime. Now, before we were chatting earlier, you live in Ontario. How much do you miss live music? <laughs> <laughs> I really miss live music. It's been a long year, hasn't it? It's, it's been, been so long. And I honestly, I feel for all of you artists because you're so used to performing in front of crowds or performing at bars, like gigs, and everything just got shut down. And it's so sad because you look at the states and it's like most state uh, states down there are reopening and it's like what's going on here why can't these provinces do the same especially in ontario but hopefully we can have live music soon that's the goal i i hope so yeah this is this is our second festival season so yeah i i really hope things get cleared up soon i hope I, we're, we're moving in the right direction i think yeah <laughs> oh, slowly but surely slowly but surely yeah a second festival season yeah like oh. Honestly, I could talk about this for days, but we're not even going to get into that because it just makes me really mad, and I'm sure it makes you mad too. But what have you been up to? Tell all the viewers what you've been up to. You know, regardless of the shows, it's still busy. It's always busy behind the scenes. So that's, that's good news, right? Um, I've been busy in the studio. I just released a new single a couple weeks ago called Get Out, and it's actually perfect for right now because it's about getting out of the house <laughs> uh, so it's great for covid um it's kind of it's like that post pandemic song you know people have been locked up for so long they just want to get out of the house and that's exactly what this song is about so perfect timing for this but yeah excited to release that uh written by a couple friends of mine uh doug jackson joyce sampson and jeff power everybody just wants to get out whether it's to go for a walk to go to put your garbage out on the street too or like go to a bar like people are just craving that because we've been restricted from that like normalcy for a while now and it's really starting to get it and play with our mental health physical like everything it really is so i love that you put that song out it's bringing everybody's moods up that's what we need in a time like this those upbeat songs and and yeah, that's awesome. So I just want to get a little history out of you. How long have you been in the music field for? Uh, you know what? I've been doing music since I was a little girl. Uh, I started training when I was younger, did all the dance lessons and the music lessons. I went to an arts high school, uh, Topical School of the Arts. Um, ECI, yeah, I went to ECI. Okay, okay. I'm familiar so with that school. Yeah, which great school and was able to, you know, really focus on my music theater and music and dance background there. Mm -hmm. And then um, I did a lot of theater shows before I got into band, like with a band. Uh, I went to Japan. Uh, I played Anne, Anna Green Gables in Japan for two weeks, which was absolutely amazing. And yeah, and then once I finished university, I really decided I wanted to focus in, in the music field. And so I've kind of been doing music since then with a band and country music, I'd say uh, the last five to seven years. So I've been focusing on that. So yeah, it's, it's great. I love it. So did like your mom or your dad like get you into music? Did they ever play like um, a certain instrument or were they always like singing around the house? Like how, how was your childhood like? Yeah, so my dad used to play drums, so he did that a long time ago, and he was into artistic roller skating, so I kind of get my artistic side of things from him. Mm. Uh, he used to train uh, artistic roller skaters, he had a gold medalist, so um, he was very involved with that, so I think that's where I get my dancing and my music side from. Yeah. And then my mom's side, so my, my sister's very involved with music. She, she plays instruments. She's a music teacher, uh, but was never really into the entertainment part of it. Mm -hmm. And then on my mom's side, uh, my grandma used to do a little bit of singing as well. So yeah, a little bit of a music artistic family. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So who were your influences? 
who did you always used to listen to? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I have a wide variety of influences. Um, I grew up listening to a variety of different, different people. My dad has like a huge, a huge record collection in the basement, which he still has today. But we just, we grew up listening to music. You know, they, they'd expose us to different things like Elvis Presley, um, the Beatles, you know, all of the classics. Mm -hmm. And then as we got older, they would take my sister and I to, to different shows. So we could just experience different people and just appreciate different genres. Yeah, like a little like diversity in there and get to appreciate all the different genres instead of just one. But you mentioned Elvis Presley. Okay, yeah, I love him. I came from a Presley household. My middle name is Priscilla for a reason. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so I was gonna ask, have you ever been to like Memphis? Have you seen Graceland? I have not, that's actually on my bucket list, but I have the same birthday as Elvis, dad, so. January 8th. <laughs> oh, that's me. My parents saw him live, I know, a few times. I didn't get to experience that. But no, I love his music. We grew up listening to it. I still perform some of his music today. Um, and yeah, he's definitely a great influence. Yeah, of course. And, and you got to go when, I, well, I'm sure you could even travel down now. There's just like quarantines and the tests and all that stuff. But if you ever get the chance, you have to go. It's so surreal like I know I'm getting off topic here but like it's so surreal to be there and to like immerse yourself in all of that like to think like Elvis sat here I've Elvis ate like here like that's his like it's so 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 neat and whenever you get the chance you gotta go especially to Nashville itself like it's like you gotta go to Nashville oh, yeah no Nashville I've been a few times oh. yeah yeah. We go there quite a bit. I mean, we haven't over the last year because of the pandemic, but no, I'm always going to Nashville. I've got friends there. Um, I actually performed at Dollywood uh, in the States, which was pretty amazing. Um, and I go down to write and just meet up with, with some of my music friends there. So it's, it's an amazing area. Yeah, love Nashville. Nashville is the place to be if you want to be a country music artist or even just an artist in general sometimes like because you're surrounded by so much talent down there and there's a lot of Canadian talent too down there nowadays so many artists from like all across Canada like in Alberta and Ontario Saskatchewan like everywhere is just going down to Nashville and they're meeting up with so many talented singer songwriters and they're just coming out with like all these like hit songs like even with Megan Patrick nowadays like she's just rocking it down there she's killing it yeah no it's definitely amazing very inspirational when you go and you do see it like yep. people have not been they should go whether you like country music or you don't like country music yep. there's a little bit for everyone right and it's a party city it's a real party <laughs> city <laughs> now I was reading up on your bio okay so you can play quite a number of instruments Okay, like I was like stunned. So guitar, fiddle, keyboard, saxophone, clarinet, bagpipes, American flute, drums, and a harmonica. How in the world did you learn to play all of these instruments? Oh, well, I'm always trying to learn new things. So um, when I was young, uh, my parents, you know, basically said to me, okay, Tiana, you can do whatever you want, you want, you can learn whatever you want, but you can't quit. So I just keep learning, you know, like as a younger to an adult, um, even in my adult years, you know, you just try to keep incorporating things and adding them to your list of things. Oh, I'm going to hear my, that just brought me my, this is my North American flute. This is a pretty special flute for me because it was customized for me. It's got my backwards, but it's got my logo on there. Yeah. Um, so very special, master but uh, this is a master flute builder who, who built this. So really, really nice. But no, building, you know, learning instruments is, is great. And then I incorporate them in my shows, you know, to make it more interesting for everyone. Yeah, and it's, it's, good that you, it's good that you know how to play, like, all different instruments. Because let's just say, like, hypothetically, one of your band members is out. Like, you got no one to play the drums or no one to do this. It's like, I got it. I'll do this and sing at the same time. 
right? And you have more of appreciation for the music itself. So if you're, you're, you know, I'm in the studio, I can say, oh, you know, I hear this. Or, you know, if we're in band practice, hey, guys, why don't you try this? Or, you know, just a more appreciation and you can kind of talk through the music and the arrangements as well. Yeah. And now take us through your songwriting. How do you come up with songs? What, like, is it something that just comes to you naturally? Like, you'll be out in a song, like a lyric will just pop in your head or a quote and you just start writing down or does it take you like kind of a couple hours or days like how, how does it all work for you uh for me i usually like to write based on titles you know so i'll i'll come up with a creative title and then i'll just build the song from there um i do some a lot of co-writing as well so you know we're we're sharing ideas and coming up with brainstorming ideas together oh, yeah but but titles uh are the best way for me yeah i feel like titles are key because as soon as you write down like a title you just know what that song is going to be about because the title it gives it away right away right i mean there's probably some songs that are kind of deceiving but majority of them, once you read the title, you know if it's going to be like a sappy song or a happy song or, or so on and so forth. Now, Tian, I want to like talk to you about more personal stuff. So I always play this game called Country with Celine Rapid Fire with all the artists. And it's just to kind of get to know more personal stories out of you. Stuff that like you probably wouldn't have gotten asked in a regular interview. Um, so the first one I want to start off. And I've been getting a lot of funny answers from this, so I really want to ask it. What is your most embarrassing moment? <laughs> um, falling off a ladder in a show. I think oh, that yeah. would... Yeah, I was actually in Japan doing a theater show. It was live, Anna Green Gables. And um, there's a set. I had to come out of a window and climb down a ladder. Well, the ladder was not locked <laughs> when I climbed down the ladder and I just yeah fell luckily I fell on my two feet which was good but yeah it was a little bit embarrassing <laughs> that's terrifying that's it, it, climbing a, that's like my biggest fear because I work at a toy store and I'm always climbing ladders so like I'm terrified of heights, so the ladder's not that tall, but for me, that was tall enough. What is your proudest accomplishment? Proudest accomplishment? Ah, well, I would say going to Japan was, was amazing, like getting that lead role, um, and also performing on stage with um, Carol Baker. That was pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, it was at one of her shows. She actually called me up to do a song with her. So that was amazing. Yeah. Really yeah. amazing. Stuff like yeah. that you always remember. You always hold a place of that in your heart. And then also performing in Dollywood. Carrie Trader. Yeah. Performing in Dollywood. Um, and uh, working with Carrie Chater, who is an amazing songwriter in Nashville. He's like written for everyone under the sun. Wow. Reba McIntyre, Alan Jackson, like all the big, big people. Mm -hmm. um, he's like a true friend of mine and I've had the opportunity to work with him. Uh, he's also Canadian, lives, lives in the States now, but amazing. Yeah, so I have, I have a few moments that I would say. That's awesome. The more the merrier. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> what is your favorite saying? Just do it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I've been saying that to myself like every day for like this past two weeks. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I saw a video on that a few months ago and it was just about like just doing it. You know, you don't feel like it. Just get out and just do it. Yep. That's all. Yeah, exactly. Just do it. That's all you can say. <laughs> and what celebrity would you like to call up and go for a Starbucks with? Uh, I would say Reba McIntyre. I love Reba. Like I've, I've always admired her. You know, she's such an amazing female artist, yeah. uh, a strong woman just in general. Um, I've seen her a few times perform at uh, Fallsview Casino. And she's just amazing. She commands that stage. 
you know, she's got such great experience. I would love to have a coffee with her. So is that someone that you would idolize? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. missed the show, Reba. That was a good show. That was, yeah. It was a good show. Right? Yeah. Funny lady, too. She's got a good sense of humor and just seemed, I have never met her, but she seems like she's got a really good heart. And yeah. Yes. Yeah. And what was your first job? Let's bring it back. <laughs> oh, cashier. <laughs> cashier. Yes. We, um, just in a, a supermarket down the street, down the street from actually my house here. Um, yeah, I was there for, for years. Oh, got a phone ringing here. Um, all good. All good. It's life. <laughs> but yeah, I was a cashier and I worked in the cash office. Um, very first job that helped put me through school. Yeah. And guitar player. Yeah. You gave it to somebody else at the casino. I heard a guitar player in the background. Oh, yeah, my guitar. Tell that story. <laughs> Not talking to so, I love Keith Urban. He's he's also someone that I'd probably love to have a coffee with. Who wouldn't? Who the heck wouldn't? <laughs> I'm I'm not talking to him. I love him, but I'm not talking to him. I saw him at Falls View Casino as well, and he did a great show. But he he had a guitar that he was giving away at the, the show, balcony. and he came up in the balcony with his guitar, and I like literally crawled over to to try to get close to him to try to get get this guitar and I got there right beside him I was there and he gave it to the girl beside me <laughs> and I had a show the next day I was like I could have been playing Keith Urban's guitar yeah, yeah. we totally could have played that just go to another show of his maybe he'll give you one next time maybe he'll remember you maybe he will yeah but I'd love to meet him as well mm -hmm. great. he's he's an awesome performer I, I've seen him perform numerous times and he doesn't disappoint like he just owns that stage and he sounds like his songs like because you know there's a lot of people who they really auto-tune their voice and they don't actually sound like themselves or like we hear on our phones on the cd in person but he's the exact same and he's just awesome and he's such a humble guy he's so humble yeah no he seems like a good guy and a, and a killer guitar player so yeah. Amazing guitar player. Um, and what is your favorite holiday? Christmas. I love Christmas. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. I don't love the cold, no. but just not even like, you know, gifts or anything, but just, you know, being with family. Like it's a great time of year. I like that. Of course. Of course. Going to Florida for Christmas too. If you haven't done that, you should do it because yeah. if it feels odd because there's no snow, but it's nice at the same time. <laughs> yeah, they have big parties at Disney World, right? For yeah, for Christmas. Yep. Florida. Yeah. And they decorate it all in Orlando. They like decorate all of Disney World. It's yeah, it's really pretty. It's really I've seen pictures. That's I've never pretty. been there for for Christmas, but like it looks like it's really nice. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> and the last one is what's one thing that you will never do again? I will never do it again. Wow. Is there like a certain food maybe or like a certain store or like something? Can you think of anything? A lot of people have trouble with this question. I'm like, I'm trying to pull something here. Well, for food, I'd say uh, liver. I'm not a liver fan, which is really strange because the rest of my family loves it, but I'm the odd one. So no, I've, I've tried it and I just don't like it. <laughs> Um, everyone. <laughs> yeah, but for stores and stuff, I can't really think of anything else. No. <laughs> it's not good. I'm sure you did a lot of online shopping though, since you've moved <laughs> up in our home. Amazon is great. Yes, <laughs> Amazon is really good, and and it's great because you can order online. There's no hassle returns. So yes, definitely, definitely. So true. So true. Yeah, Amazon is top notch. Such a good site. It really pulls out all of your money though out of your wallet i will say that but <laughs> it's worth it <laughs> it's worth it uh, but thank you so much tiana for joining me on country with Celine. this is awesome you're such a chill person i love this um everyone go stream get out 
You got to go stream it. Get out. And also, we hope that live music is back soon so you can see Tiana Woods perform. But we will just be waiting around to see when that can be. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they can check out all my music on my website. Um, so I have an online store. So all of my music's on my website. There's merchandise on there. And you can check out some other interesting tips. You know, I've got a full bio and everything. And um, you can read about the instruments. It used to be a, you know, a wrestling announcer. They can read about that. So just different, different, different things. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. I didn't know that part. <laughs> you used to be a wrestling announcer? Yeah, like like WWE style. Yeah, my family used to own uh, our wrestling federation called the EWF and LWF. And I used to be, I started running the music for it. And then I became the, the ring announcer. And it was great. Lots, met lots of the, the older wrestlers, sure, King sure, Kong, sure. Bundy. Sensational Sherry did a pilot with us for like a female wrestling pilot. Um, lots of great people. Yeah, it was fun. A lot That's of fun. Awesome. Oh, what? I did not know that. And I read your bio too, and I did not know <laughs> that. Um, but that's really cool. Wow, you have a lot of accomplishments underneath your belt. <laughs> Well, thank you. We'll, we'll keep adding to that. <laughs> Not adding. I know we're, we're still young. We're still young. We got our lives ahead of us. <laughs>